In this video, we are going to use a simulation study to investigate the sampling distribution of the proportion. So to work out a proportion, we first need an x value, and that x value represents the number of um, successes we observe in a fixed number of trials. So our x value has a binomial distribution, so that variable is binomially distributed with some uh, value of n and some probability of success. So that value p is the success in a single trial as well as the overall success in our population. So we are going to work with a binomial 56 0.275 distribution in this question. So we start by generating our data using the random number generator tool. So we'll generate one column of x values and we'll generate a thousand of them. And this will be from a binomial distribution with value P 0.275 and number of trials 56. So the random seed I'm going to use is 1, 2, 3 and we'll place the values here in cell A2. So now we have our x values. Now we want to calculate our p-bar values from that, and the way we would do it is we would divide our x values each by the number of trials we have. So in this case, the number of trials is 56, so I'm going to reference that, and then I'm going to calculate p-bar for each of these samples. So we can see that each time we're dividing by 56. Now, before we can calculate any theoretical probabilities and percentiles, we first need to understand the distribution of, uh, of p-bar. So we know that if x has a binomial distribution and we want to calculate p-bar based on those x values, then p-bar will have a approximate normal distribution with mean p and variance p1 minus p over n and this is the case if we know that np is larger or equal to 5 and n1 minus p is larger or equal to 5. So this basically just means that we want to make sure that we have at least five successes or we expect five successes in our um, sample and we expect five failures in our sample at least five of them so if we want to go and work out our population parameters we know that the average for p bar is going to be equal to p so if i took every possible sample of x values converted them to p bar values and i looked at the average p bar value it should be equal to my population proportion in the same way, if I want to calculate my variance of p-bar, we know that that is just based on my original parameters. So that is going to be p times 1 minus p divided by n. So that is my variance. Now, if I wanted to investigate the empirical distribution of p-bar, I'm going to use the 1000 p-bar values that I've generated. So I just need to calculate the average of these values. So that's the average of the values in column B and the variance. And since this is not every single p-bar value I could observe uh, because I didn't um, generate the population, I generated a sample, I'm going to use the variance.s function. So I just highlight that column and there we go. And we can see that these empirical statistics or the sample statistics are very close to the population parameters. So we are on the right track here. Now, because we know that p-bar has an approximate normal distribution, it means that when we want to calculate a probability related to p-bar, we can again use the norm dot inverse function. Oh, norm.dist function, sorry. So the norm.dist function again uses a value that we're interested in. So we want to calculate now the probability that p-bar is less than 0 0.2. 
So we place 0 0.2 there. And now we need the mean of our variable, which is the mean of p bar. We also need the standard deviation of our variable. So we need the square root of the variance. And again, we are using this value over here in cell F6, or sorry, F7, because we are working with p bar. And now we just need to choose true because we want a cumulative probability. And that gives us this formula or this um, answer here. If we wanted to look at the empirical probability that p bar is less than 0 0.2, it means that we're not making any assumptions about the distribution of p bar. We are just going to see what we've observed. So we are going to go count in this range of uh, p bar values how many of them are less than 0 0.2 but we don't want to look at the count we want to look at the relative frequency or the probability of this um, occurring so we need to take this relative to the number of values or the number of p bar values that we have in column b so i'm using the count function for that when i calculate that we can see it's not 100 percent the same but it's close enough now for a theoretical percentile we are going to use the norm dot inverse function so the norm dot inverse function uses the probability that we're interested in so we are interested in the 75th percentile so we type in 0 0.75 and then again we need to indicate the mean of our variable that we're interested in and the standard deviation of that variable so it's just the square root of the variance so we can find that our 75th percentile for p bar is 0 0.315 blah 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 now we can also calculate our empirical percentile and that we find by using the percentile.exe function. So we are not going to make any assumptions about the distribution of p bar. We are just looking at the observed p bar values. So if we do that, we highlight our range that contains the p bar values and we indicate that we are interested in the 75th percentile. And we can see again, it is relatively close. Now, you'll notice that these values are a little bit further away from the theoretical values than we had in the case of the sample mean when we were doing empirical and theor um, theoretical percentiles and probabilities there. And that is just because our n value here is quite small. So remember, we said we want np greater or equal to 5 and n1 minus p greater or equal to 5 but we need to also remember that the further away p is from 0 0.5 the larger our sample size needs to be in order to make this a good approximation so if we increased our sample size our estimate should become closer to our um, theoretical probabilities and percentiles